Film Brew coming at you with a beer review. I, mean, I haven't been doing as many of these, but my back's feeling better. The grandkids aren't here yet, they're on their way. And I thought I would squeeze one in today. It is January 15th, and it's about oh, 4.45. There you go, all the details. And the beer we have here came to us from Exit 12 Brewing. That's Brandon and Nick, thank you both. And this is a uh, collaboration. This is called Luxurious Tiles. It's from Trillium Brewing. They brewed it and they collaborated this with the Bissell Brothers who are out of Portland, Maine. Not Portland, Oregon, the other side of the country. That's right. But it looks like a fun little beer and I'll tell a little bit about it. What they came up with was they combined the uh, mild spicy rye malt and the mosaic hops that are in their beer. That's Bissell's that is. They're from their Lux Pale Ale. And then they combine the local wildflower honey that they've used in Trillium's Cutting Tiles series. So it should be interesting. You've got some, uh, nothing wrong with mosaic, and you've got some honey in there. So this is actually an IPA, it's, but I would call it an Imperial IPA uh, uh, because it's 8.5% ABV. This is 8.5% ABV. That ain't your... Your next door neighbor's pale ale, let me tell you. And it looks like a hazy beer, which doesn't surprise me. I know Trillium does a lot of those. I'm not familiar with the Bissell Brothers. Maybe uh, if, if you're from the Northeast and you've been out to Maine, you know them, let me know a little bit about them. So I'm not, I don't have my normal glass. I got my fancy one today. Let's get a whiff. Woo, now this came to me as a Christmas present. I didn't look for dates at this point. It's probably pretty fresh, I would guess, but man, the nose was full. The first thing I got immediately, though, was a nose full of citrus, and I got some orange, uh, but I got kind of really a pithy grapefruit off of it. Yeah, big time pithy grapefruit for sure. It's like a pink pithy grapefruit on there. There's some tropical notes coming in, a little bit of mango pineapple. Yeah, a little mango pineapple. I, might, I think there's like a hint of some pine resin on that as well, uh, but it'd be very light. Um, but yeah, it, it smells good. And uh, let's go ahead and jump on in. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. Wow, that's... Ooh, okay, it does a shift. I love that. It does a shift. So, ooh, ma, so it does a shift. And at the end now, I'm getting kind of a, 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 a hop kick for sure. A little bit of resin and whatnot, but boy, and it, 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 it turns into this somewhat bitter, uh, not harsh, but it, and it dries out on the palate a bit. Wow, it's throwing me. It's very interesting. Again, it, it's hazy. Wow. Man, are you getting a mouth full of hops. Fruity hops. Big time. It's really good. And it's really balanced in terms of sweetness. It's not super sweet, but it's, it has enough sweetness to balance out this huge level of hops. It's not bitter on the outside. It just comes in with some bitterness on the back. But I like the tiles aspect because, God, that's what it is, man. You're probably putting together all these different tiles of flavor. So I'm still definitely getting uh, that uh, uh, grapefruit, I'm still getting a little bit of an orange. I definitely get some citrus pithy type qualities off of it. Very juice-like, very juicy. I'm getting the mango and the flavor, just a hint of the pineapple. There's probably little dash marks, if you will, you know, underlying flavors of some other stuff like passion fruit in there. A hint of guava on the backside. But really, those other things are, are the bigger players, that grapefruit and orange and the pithy flavors. Again, as it dries out, it becomes more pithy, more like the orange rind, but leaning towards that, uh, not a harsh orange rind, but it's, it's definitely there. And I would still say there's just the slightest hint of some pine-type quality or resinous quality, I would say, not pine. The honey comes into effect. It plays in with the malts and balances out really nice. I think that's adding some of the sweetness on this. Wow, this is fun. I'm gonna take a little time with this and I'll be back. I'm back. I is filling my glass. Cause this is one dynamically beautiful beer. Those are some more colorful tiles than that can display is coming out of this beer. 
everything I've said and a bit more. It's it's funny though how this dryness. It's almost like I wonder if they use some kind of like a powder uh, hop in some of this, like the mosaic. If they had some of those powder type of uh, mosaic, it, it kind of hits my back of my throat in that pal that way. But take nothing away from the beer. Now we got to rate this. <laughs> So first we rank it in terms of style. I still say this is a hazy, more like a hazy, but it's it, they're calling it IPA. It's 8.5 percent. It's it's not a standard IPA at 8.5. Let's let's be honest about that. But it's it's a hell of a good indie pale ale, whether it's regular or, or imperial. The pithy flavors, the bright citrus on there, the the all the hops coming through. I mean. This is one delicious beer. Uh, I've got to rank it really well as far as IPAs because the flavors are so brilliant and bright. Um, I'm just really digging on it. I'm going to give this a 94. I think it's a great beer. Wow, I, I recommend this one. Well, can I tell you, life's too short to drink cheap beer. Get a friend to send you something beautiful like this. Cheers, everyone.